Right, let's welcome in our quarterback here, Danny Cannell, into the NFL Draft Film Room. We just saw that piece here by Chris Hassel talking about Will Levis, DK. He's one of those guys that continues to trend up when we're talking the top five. But what have you seen for him on the field this past season that maybe gets him into that top five conversation? Oh, Brandon. All right. So I'm a little more down on Will Levis than most people, but I wanted to keep this segment positive, right? So let's look at some highlights from Will Levis because you can see some potential in what teams are looking for in an NFL quarterback with Will Levis without question. Here he is versus Youngstown, uh, Youngstown State. Starts off in the shotgun, and then he's got good athleticism. He's a strong, powerful runner, and he's got the ability to make defenders miss. Extending plays, hurtling some defenders, and then how about the physicality? This is Thing that jumps off to me both when he's working out at his pro day and he's got those pipes on display but he has a really strong lower half I think his quads really rival those of Saquon Barkley and there he is you see him delivering a powerful blow at the end of the run so all right that's one aspect of his game that we really like but what about from the pocket this is where he's gonna have to win games and here you see a strong, sturdy base within the pocket. Wide legs, I love that. Strong, sturdy base. Movement in the pocket, knows he's about to get hit. That was one impressive throw to me. And then hits the receiver right in stride to keep him running for a big play on the outside. Again, pocket presence, able to handle a hit right after you throw it. You can see the hit on this one. You see the rusher coming in, feels the pressure able to get the ball out and still keep him on stride. So there you go. There's one from the pocket. Another impressive throw from Will Levis that I'm sure the scouts have found at this point. Then here against Tennessee, primetime game, big window. You have to, We know he's got the rocket for an arm, but what about the touch throws? Here, seven-step drop, play-action pass. Love the footwork, love the ball handling, but even more so, love the touch on the pass to his tight end who came out of the backfield. You see number 85 slips out in coverage. And with a tight end, you got to give them a good catchable ball, perfectly thrown in stride, leads them a little bit away from the fender. So these are some of the throws that I think the scouts are seeing from Will Levis, Brandon, that really have them elevating his status in the stock as one of the top four quarterbacks available. Some experts have him high as going to Indy there, maybe their next QB one. Another guy that's also rising despite an injury she Injury, Hendon Hooker, 25 years of age, maybe a little older than the others there, but we can't forget what he did at Tennessee, getting up to number one. We saw the skill set, but what did you see from him? Brandon, he's one of my favorite quarterbacks in this class. I actually like him better than Will Levis or Anthony Richardson, regardless of where you're selecting. But I see an NFL prototype quarterback. He's big, he's physical, and he can stretch the field vertically almost as good as anybody. But I did want to showcase his running ability because this is becoming a prerequisite to play quarterback in the NFL. He was looking downfield, felt the pressure, even took some contact and was able to extend it to the outside. You see here, pocket breaks down, senses a little bit of that pressure, and then smart, allows that big boy up front to get out in front of him so he doesn't take a hit, then extends the play. He's a long striding runner. I don't think he's gonna be an electric runner, but he definitely provides you what you need in the run game from the quarterback position. Then here, just a very natural throw of the quarterback. People criticize him for playing in the system. How about this play? Out of the system, improvising, rolling to his left, keeping his eyes downfield. And this is a really hard throw to make. Rolling to your left, keeping it accurate back to the right. And then the top tier arm strength. This is a throw that's absolutely ripped. A skinny post between the safety and the corner on rhythm, on timing, perfectly thrown so he can keep his receiver on, uh, on rhythm so he can get those yards after the catch. But I also want to point out this game, they were down by one at this point, 35-34. They needed a big play. He stepped in, up in that moment. I love how Hendon Hooker elevated the Tennessee football program to a place it hadn't been in 20 years, and that play was one of the ones that allowed them to do it. A lot of people think he can get past that injury and get back to what we saw there this past season for Tennessee. Maybe a, a dark horse here, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, maybe a guy that you actually like here, but when you think about it, DK, you go back, he, he flashes the big arm, he flashes a little bit UCLA, but never really consistent. What do you see here from DTR? So, Brandon, I think he's probably a third or fourth round later where I start to see some real value. And you mentioned the struggles at UCLA, but the thing I love consistently got better. But, boy, those flashes are impressive. And let's take a look at some of them. This, again, a similar throw to what we saw Hen and Hooker. This is a requirement in the NFL. You have to be able to rip the skinny post, beat that corner safety. Almost the exact same throw, but this time to the left that Dorian Thompson Robinson made. We saw Hen and Hooker's to the right. Again, perfectly placed ball. Here he is in the shotgun versus Arizona State, playing in the Pac-12. 
similar to what we were talking about before, you've got to be able to make plays outside of the pocket. Now he is electric when he runs with the football. And this one, I would caution him in the NFL, be careful. We've seen Josh Allen hurdle, you know, defenders. You don't want to get blown up, but see that the awareness at the end of the play to protect his body. He's not going to take any unnecessary shots. And I love the athleticism he displayed hurling the linebacker there. And then here's another one strong arm this guy set the record for the fastest mile per hour throw at the combine and here you can see that evidence in a practical situation when there's a zone linebacker looking right at you the timing of the throw has to beat the defense and he just absolutely rips it right on the numbers to number nine who's able to turn and make a touchdown for him so you start to see some of that raw talent on the on display from dtr that I think some teams could find a diamond in the rough a little bit later in the draft. Day two, uh, day three, most likely for DTR. You mentioned one of those system guys. We'll see how it pans out for him and others we just talked about there. DK is always appreciated. Don't forget, we're going to break everything down when it comes to the film room. This is only part two. We're going to get to a little bit here when it comes to the QBs. Uh, it's a very interesting class, by the way. And don't forget, this all leads up to what? The draft starting on Thursday. Film breakdown, though, continues here on HQ throughout the week.